Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to show you how you can compute this limit over there. So now this limit, although it kind of looks like Euler's number, you know that if you have, if you don't have 2 over n, but 1 over n, that is going to be Euler's number. But although you might think that this equals Euler's number, that's not the case. These two changes many things, and I'm going to show you how that happens, how these two makes this limit not equal e, okay? So let's begin. Now I'm going to define this limit to be equal to y, okay? And now I'm going to take the natural log on both sides of this equation. And now I'm going to show you something that might confuse you for a moment, but I'm going to explain it then. So uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 2 over n to the n power, okay? So now you might be wondering that, well, if I took ln y, shouldn't this be equal to, shouldn't the, the right side of the equation be ln of this limit? And yes, that is true, but there is a property of logarithms and, and limits that goes like this. The natural log of any limit as x approaches any value c for the function f of x is going to be the same as if you wrote ln inside the limit. So it's going to be the same as the limit as x approaches c for the natural log of f of x, okay? So now, of course, this statement has, you know, it has some exceptions and it has some adjacent ideas, but I'm not going to go into those, those ideas today. I want to keep this video brief, and I'm not going to be able to do, that, to do that if I explain this in depth, so I'm not going to explain it too much, but just consider that this is true. And uh, from this equation, from this idea, we can write ln inside this limit, okay? And then, well, you're going to see what we're, what we're able to do. So now let's continue. We know that if we have ln of this function to an exponent, well, there is another property of logarithms that basically goes ln of ax is going to be x times ln a, okay? You can move this exponent to the front and multiply. Over here, we have an exponent n, and we're going to move it to the front. So we have that ln y is going to be, I'm going to continue down here, and I'm going to erase this so we don't think that this equals that. So you have this limit is going to be equal to uh, the limit as n approaches infinity for n, the exponent, times the natural log of 1 plus 2 over n. Okay? Now this is how much we get. Until this point, we have not done anything special. We have just simply, um, you know, rearranged the function that we had at the beginning, and that's pretty much it, okay? Now, if we really want to start solving this limit, well, we're going to define a new variable, and you're going to see what happens. So, I'm going to let delta x be equal to 2 over n, okay? If you were computing Euler's number, this would be 1 over n, but we have 2 over n, so we need to include the 2, okay? And you're going to see why, well, we need to consider the number that we have above the n. So now if we let delta x be equal to 2n, you can now substitute uh, delta x into this limit. So anywhere that you see n, well, you can plug in uh, delta x. And now, we, you, I believe that you know how you can just simply substitute this n and this n by delta x, but what about this limit over here? Well, if you want to change this notation, if you don't want to use n as your variable but delta x, well, you can see it like this. The limit as, delta, as n approaches infinity of the function uh, 2 over n. Now, I'm actually, should I? Yeah, I should use that, that, that form. So 2 over n is going to be the same as the limit as delta x approaches 0 for delta x. So what is going on over here? Well, what I'm trying to show you so that we can get rid of this limit as n approaches infinity is going to be that if n approaches infinity, which is what's happening in this function, you have a variable that is moving to infinity, n. If n approaches infinity for 2n, well, that is going to be the same as if delta x approaches 0 for 2n or delta x. It doesn't matter what you write over there. Uh, and you know that this is true because, well, plug in infinity over 2, that's going to be basically zero, okay? If you take the limit of that, it's going to be equal to zero. So you know that if you have the limit as n approaches infinity, well, that is going to be the same if uh, as if delta x was approaching zero, okay? So you can just simply see it from this equation. If n equals a very big number, well, that's basically going to make uh, delta x get closer to zero, okay? So now you can rewrite this thing as... I'm going to take away the period from here. You can rewrite this thing as... 
and I'm actually uh, I, yeah, I'm gonna leave that over here and I'm gonna continue though I should I would like to use this that space over here so I'm actually gonna do this you know a, a, an arrow so now we're gonna say that this over here is gonna be equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero okay we already explained why of n we know from this equation that n is gonna be equal to 2 over delta x times the natural log of 1 plus delta x okay and now I'm gonna do something I'm going to subtract from here ln 1 ln 1 remember equals 0 so I'm basically not doing anything to the original function I'm subtracting 0 so nothing changed okay now I'm gonna show you something pretty cool over here this 2 is gonna be an ex is gonna be a coefficient so you can take it outside the limit and you can write that this is going to be equal to 2 times the limit as delta x approaches 0 for ln 1 plus delta x minus ln 1. And I believe now you're going to see what's going on over delta x. You know what this is. This is the derivative of ln evaluated at x equals 1. Okay. Over here, instead of, you know, using the typical notation of ln x plus delta x, you have ln 1, x equals 1, which means that you're taking the derivative of the natural log at x equals 1. So now you can rewrite this entire thing as 2 times the derivative with respect to x of the function ln x evaluated at x equals 1, okay? Now you know that this is going to be equal to 2 times 1 over x. When x equals 1, well, you know that is just simply going to be uh, 2, okay? You have 2 times 1, that's 2. So now, we just found, we didn't find the value for this limit, but remember, we started with ln y, okay? So we said that ln y is equal to this, which is also equal to this. If you change the notation and you start using delta x, which you can see that over here, this is the same as saying uh, the limit. I'm going to show you so you have uh, no doubts about anything we just did. The limit as n approaches infinity of ln. I'm not gonna have enough space, but I hope that you can see it from there. And that's not a that should be one, not a plus sign. So one plus one over n minus ln one over uh, one over n. Uh, and, uh, and it's actually not one over n. I'm thinking about Euler's number. I'm sorry. This is gonna be two, and this is also gonna be two. Now you can see that. When we changed the variable, we didn't really do anything weird. We just simply used something that looks better, basically, because you can substitute delta x for 2 over n, and you're going to get that this is also a derivative. As n approaches infinity, this 2 over n is going to approach 0, okay? And 2 over n is also going to approach 0. And if you have 0, well, on top and in the bottom, in the top and in the bottom, well, that is going to be the derivative of ln still, okay? It's not going to change anything. When we introduce delta x, we just simply change uh, the way in which we can see things, okay? We just change the notation so that we can see that this is the derivative in a easier way, okay? In, in a more compact way without having to interpret what is going to happen with this fraction. So now we change the variable. Uh, we didn't really do anything because it's the same as, n, as using n notation. And now we know that this is going to be the derivative of ln x evaluated at 1. And that is going to be equal to 2. And we know that ln y was equal to all this stuff. So I'm going to write that again. ln y is equal to 2. Now if you're going to cancel out a ln and just get y, well, you can write the following. You can say that e to the ln y is going to be equal to e squared. I know that e to the and e and ln they will cancel out. That is a property of logarithms that you should know, but if you don't, don't worry about it. But just know that e and ln they cancel out. Okay, so these two they're out. And you just get that y equals e squared. And well, I believe you know how much y is. Y equals that limit over there. And this limit equals the therefore that limit equals e squared. Okay. So now this is the entire problem, and I think it's pretty cool to see how one single number changes everything, because you, usually when we compute e, we have that this 2 is a 1, and it's not a 2. Okay, so in Euler's number, this is not a 2, but a 1. But, if, well, if you plug in any other number over there, well, it's pretty cool to see that uh, you're going to get e, um, e that, that you're going to get e squared and not simply e, okay? And now that I think about it, 
what if you could write and maybe i don't know if this is true but i believe it should be what if instead of writing two or any other number over there you write that this is gonna be a k let's say this is any number k it would be really cool and i think it is reasonable to say that we won't have two over instead of this two is not gonna be it's not gonna be two but it's gonna be k so we're gonna have I'm actually going to erase it because now I just noticed something pretty cool that we might be able to say. If this is not 2 but k, then we know that that thing over there, and now I'm going to say that ln y, should be equal to k times the derivative of ln x. We evaluate it at x equals 1. That's never going to change. Now, yeah, this should be right because instead of getting 2 times the derivative of ln x, well, remember, these two came from these two over x, okay? Because these two is basically just a coefficient. It doesn't really matter where you put it. You can take it outside the limit. And if we substitute two by k, well, we're going to have that k over delta x. You can take that k out. And then you get k times the derivative of ln x. And that is going to be uh, k because, well, you have k times uh, 1 over x evaluated at x equals 1. That is going to be simply k. And if you have that ln y, oh, this is pretty cool, yeah. If ln y equals k, well, that means that y is equal to e to the k power, k power. And that's pretty cool, you know. I didn't really think about it until now, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, that's, that's nice, yeah. Any number that you have over there, k, any number k, basically, is going to be the exponent that e has. So this limit regardless of what you get, of what you have on top over here, is going to be equal to e, and this number is going to determine the exponent e has. Okay, that's pretty amazing, yeah? I didn't know that until now, until I started recording, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, well, that was, well, now, yeah, I hope I just learned something new recording this video, which is pretty nice. I definitely didn't know this, and now I do, which is really cool. <laughs> and I hope that, well, you have learned something too today. Yep, that has been everything, I think so. I hope you enjoyed this video, you learned something, I learned something, so I hope you did the same thing. And yep, that has been everything. I'll see you in the following video. Don't forget to subscribe. And yep, bye.